Hey guys, my name is Katarina Berry. Um, I am an empath, and this is where this channel is dedicated to primarily. Um, I am recording this video as a um, last resort type of thing because I've been putting a, too much thought into the production production quality and setup and filming it and getting ready and like doing makeup and all these things that I wanted to do before I started filming this and time is slipping by and I'm actually having a pretty hard time uh, personally because I'm going through this large transition um, as pertains to my business, my professional life, the way that I understand myself in these roles. Um, and I'm going through some difficult discovery process because there is a lot that I'm letting go because it's not working and there are more things that are not working than there are that that are working and it's been like that for a while um in addition to the coronavirus and everything else so i uh decided that unless i make this video right now the way that i am like at this moment i'm just not going to get around to doing that and what i wanted to do is an energy update for the full moon that took place april um 7th and 8th today's april 9th so um yeah so that's that's what this video is dedicated to three messages for empaths that i uh got through channeling um and if you want to learn a little more about that i have three videos about channeling one is how you can channel yourself um, which should be showing up there's a second one which is if you don't know what channeling is um i did my best to really explain that and give you some some um, perspective on, on the different areas that it can be done in and for so that should be showing up here and then finally the third video um, talks about the examples of channeling and literature um, literature that is channeled and literature that talks about channeling and teaches some tactics so that's going to be video number three and it's going to show up right about now so with all of that being said I want to jump right in because there's a lot of perspective that I can provide as to where I am in life right now and on my journey of self-discovery and spiritual awakening and ascension and um, as an empath, as a sensitive, as an intuitive. And I'm thinking about doing a series because there's uh, this whole theme of the dark night of the soul that I went through um, three years ago and that kind of resonates and echoes now in my experience right now. And then there are certain things from that period that have like showing up now so i'm kind of trying to wrap my head around how i'm gonna do that meanwhile this video i just want to get right into the three messages for empaths um and so the first message that i'm uh i've been getting uh as pertains to our experience right now as empaths around this full moon energy is that there are things coming up that are hard to deal with and um partially it's anger it's hurt it's upset being upset feeling upset feeling disappointed um feeling betrayed feeling left out feeling um like you may have done that to yourself um feeling like you have allowed others to do this to you for maybe far too long um and it's it's all been under the covers for us because we're busy people as empaths we may not be like doing, doing, doing all the time, but we're very busy uh, with energy and we sense energy. And so we're busy processing it and transforming it. And, and you know, we're just really being, uh, holding light on the planet um, and holding light for others, especially in the dark times. So we've been shoving this stuff under the rug, the upset, the angry, the frustrated, the sad, um, the betrayed. And we've been kind of, occupying ourselves with a lot of other important work but now that it's a uh, time of quarantine um time of being isolated time of being with ourselves a lot more there is no there is no longer a way that we can ignore these things and they are coming up for a reason because this our whole planet is going through a major reset we're being um stopped in our tracks and turned around and sent home for a reason, because there is there are things that are never going to be the same. There are things that are changing very rapidly. There are things that 
are getting worse. There are things that are getting better, but overall, collectively, we're going through major transformation. And, and because of that, individually, we're also having no other, other um, way to look at it uh, besides looking at this whole collective transformation through our personal individual lens of transformation. And that's what these experiences are here to teach you. They, they are coming up for you to realize what you've been trying to hide from yourself and why. And the why usually is because it's hard to handle, because it, it will have to mean that you have to do some things very differently. It will have to mean that some things are just have ended or have to end now. And it's very uncomfortable and it's very difficult. And when you're faced with this understanding, this reality uh, that, it, that appears to you now that you have no way of uh, hiding from it, it's important to observe it, first of all, to let it arise, to observe it, to feel it, to process it, to give yourself an opportunity to have safe space to be with that realization, no matter how ugly it can be. If you're interested in a little bit of personal example, I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but uh, the, the dark night of the soul that I would like to make series about because it was a series of events that took place in my life about three years ago that um, brought me to the spiritual realization, to the spiritual path that I'm on now, to the path of self-discovery continuously and um, you know, going beyond the surface level of things and, and learning um, uh, about uh, more um, uh, energy-related um, things such as um, abilities and gifts and, and skills that I can develop that are related to a more subtle way, subtle worlds that, that are not perceivable by our limited senses. Um, so... Uh, now I've realized, I thought I ended some things then in that period of time, three years ago, like I've gone through the dark night and I'm like, wow, okay, I've been over it. I've done it. I'm good. Like I'm great. But it turns out that I, it's not been the case. I, I'm having to face the fact that for the past three years, I've created an even worse um, kind of environment for myself than the environment that I was in that wasn't self-created. And I'm having to address that and I'm having to process it and make like difficult choices as to how I'm gonna emerge out of that and how I'm like not gonna do that to myself anymore. So that is a little difficult, um, definitely very difficult. And it's been, there's been a lot of feelings coming up, a lot of unprocessed emotions, a lot of frustration and anger. Um, and I've talked to some of my empath friends that are having a lot of anger examples coming up right now, like anger issues, um, frustrations, uh, disappointment, hurt, um, a sense of being betrayed, whether by themselves or by other people. In fact, on the comments to my last, um, uh, whether it was my last energy update or my energy update related to the coronavirus, but I've had a few of you comment um, like about that. And um, I, it's real, it's happening and it's happening for a reason. So it's important for us all, myself included, to stay with the process and really like be with it, not to ignore it, not to try to hide away from it, not to try to like avoid it or pretend it's not there. But that's not healthy right now. What's healthy is going right into the heart of it and just being present, observing, being aware, acknowledging the validity, validness, I'm not sure what the word is, but the fact that your feelings are valid and that you are understanding that's coming to the surface that's very uncomfortable is valid and real. And to appreciate the fact that you have the ability to see things as they are this way now. And um, so this brings me to the next, the second kind of channeled point is that it's extremely important to be very kind to yourself right now. And what I mean by that is it's really easy to beat yourself up when you're isolated or quarantined. Even if you're quarantined with some people that are like your family, you still um, might have more alone time than you typically do. And I personally enjoy alone time, but not being social, not being able to go out in public and have a conversation with someone or just be around people is kind of putting me into my own head a lot more than I'm used to. Um, 
by the way, I'm going to try to remember to include this, but I'm going to include a link. I'm a clear cognizant empath. There are four types. Um, I have a, a bit of like traits of all four, but I want you to, if you, if you are like me, if you're in your head, if you get your kind of messages and inspirations and spiritual guidance through thoughts and it's all in your head, you get these ideas, you have to keep writing them down. Like that's the type that I am. Now there are four types. So there's another video that is, that talks about all four. And then I've made videos about each of the other types as well. So check those out. Again, I'm going to try my best not to forget to link it all. But, um, but what I'm trying to say here is being in my head has resulted in me beating myself up a lot more. So being in my head, first of all, um, with the situation being kind of inside and uh, going a little maybe stir crazy sometimes, um, I'm used to, I like going to the gym. I like in doing like moving um, because it helps me uh, get rid of the, well, not get rid of, but transform the energies that I pick up from other people as an empath. So um, without that ability and sometimes without kind of like, because sometimes I'll, I, I love going on walks, but now sometimes I don't want to go on a walk because I'm going to see a lot of people that are um, going through a really hard time. Um, and like, it's just so weird seeing the empty streets and, and people struggling, like it's, it's a hard sight. So um, often I'll, you know, not go or exercise and I've been beating myself up so much about that or, or I'll think about being productive, but with all the things changing and the anxiety and, and some of my projects coming to complete end because they need to, because I no longer can do that or want to. Um, sometimes I'll, I, I'll have plans to be productive, but I'll end up just kind of being and thinking and overthinking. And then I, I guilt myself, you know, and it's not good right now. This time isn't for guilting. This time isn't for beating yourself up for not being productive. This time isn't for you to um, feel bad about uh, the changes that the world is going through and the changes that are affecting you because they're affecting all of us. It's time to be extremely kind to yourself, as kind as you can and then some. That That's very true. Um, and I am not saying that I've mastered this practice by any means, I have not, but I'm doing my best to adjust and to allow more self-love at this time, even though it's hard. Um, and I'm also trying to, um, I'm connecting a lot more with my friends that are not necessarily the friends that I talk to on daily basis in like typical times, but these are my closest friends. Um, two of them live in Russia and one of them lives currently in Austria, um, although she's from the United States. And I've been talking to all three of them like pretty much every day because I'm, I've realized that I can't do this on my own. Like I can't not beat myself. I need someone, I need people that love me. I need my people. I need my tribe. Um, I need the people that love me, support me, and encourage me no matter what. I love what the lights are doing. I'm using just natural lighting in my office, so there's like a little bit of a rainbow going on. <laughs> um, this is very lovely, but this, this is what I'm talking about, being kind to yourself. Surround, like reach out to people that love you no matter what, that love you unconditionally, that have um, that have so much love in your heart, that always have your back. And even if you can't see them, even if you can't be with them at this time, try to talk to them and try to get that love, to receive that love, and to that will help you express it towards yourself. That will help you be kinder to yourself. It's been helping me a lot. My friends have been helping me so much. If you don't have anyone to reach out to, guys, like if you're an empath going through this completely alone or you feel like no one gets you, no one knows what an empath even means, no one like understands you, no one loves you, um, leave, leave me a comment. I'll, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you um, and to, to, uh, to address whatever your concerns are or whatever your questions are um, to the best of my ability. I've been responding to all the comments that I get on my channel so far and all of them are from empaths anyway. So. I would be happy to have a conversation with you, seriously. Um, so consider that. Um, that can help you with self-love quite a bit, I promise. So, so that was number two. So number three, the final message that I have now um, is it is extremely important to only do what you love right now because anything else doesn't matter. Anything else 
you can do later. Anything else you can do after this virus is over. But right now is your time to do just what you came here to do. Like, and I'm, if you, I don't, I don't want to get into big terms in this video and like talk about the purpose and like the soul's mission, like all that, you know, I'm, just do what makes you happy is what I'm trying to say. Whatever you love doing, whatever makes you happy, do only that. Um, if whatever makes you happy is, you know, I don't know, sitting there with a book or um, writing or I don't know, or just meditating or doing yoga or, you know, planting your garden or um, going on walks or, or listening to your favorite music, prioritize these activities, like focus on these activities. I know that a lot of us still have a lot of obligations and needing to figure things out and that's totally understandable but um when you get through these tasks always set a task like make it a task to do what you love make it a task to listen to that music make it a task to go on that walk make it a task to make your favorite cup of tea and just sit there with a book treat it like a job okay treat it like work treat it treat your joyous fun uh, pleasure-filled activities like it's your job right now, like your main job. And I'm talking all the other work is your part-time job. This is your main top priority job right now, is to make yourself happy, do what makes you happy, um, do what mm, fulfills you, do what inspires you, and treat it as a serious commitment. Like, if you're, if you're into making daily lists and kind of keeping yourself busy that way, making daily schedules, put it on your schedule, write down. Um, so like create a separate category, like the most important, like full-time job category, making myself happy. So, okay, having that cup of tea, taking my favorite bath, reading this book, going on the walk, like make several tasks that are just about you making yourself happy doing what you love. Um, I'm learning to do this. It's it's creating miracles in my life. I, I and like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm going through a challenging time. I am pivoting the focus of my whole entire professional life, like completely uprooting everything. I'm reevaluating everything that I've done over the past three years. I am making really difficult decisions as far as it comes to like eliminating some things once and for all. Um, not pu putting them on pause, not, you know, putting it off until later, but like saying, okay, am I doing this? Why am I doing it? Is it meaningful? Does it make me happy? Do I want to continue doing it? And if not, then it has to go. Um, so I'm kind of at a crossroads and I have no idea the direction I'm going to go in. And it's a scary and it feels right at the same time. Like, I'm not even looking to make decisions. I'm not even looking to... Uh, try to come up with what I'm going to do next. I am at a point where I'm ready to allow that to come to me. I'm ready to, I'm at the point where I'm ready to invite the next thing to come into my life freely and see what it is. Just allow it to come into my life because my source, my higher self, my soul, my guides, they know what's the next best thing for me. They know where I've been. They know what I've just realized. They know the work that I'm doing now. They know how much I'm shedding, sacrificing, cap cutting off. I, I don't like the word sacrificing. I'm cutting things off. I'm cutting dead limbs. And they've been dead, dead for a while, but I've been trying to convince myself that they're not. And I'm no, no longer doing that. And it's scary. So so all of my guidance system, my spiritual guidance system, they're all, including my own soul, it's, it's all clear um, up there or wherever that is, vibrationally speaking. Um, they're aware. They know. And I know. And I'm aware. So instead of trying to come up or um, like exercise control and force and be like, that's what I want to do next or this thing is what I'm going to go after. I've done that for too long and it hasn't really served me especially over the past three years, I've, I've forced myself to stay in something that I initially believed in, which was my own uh, creation, essentially. And it's not been working ever, really. And I've just, it's just been such a long lesson. And I'm so ready to move forward. So instead of coming up with things, I'm just allowing the things to come to me. And that's kind of an unofficial fourth um, bonus point is 
maybe this is something that I would like for you to try as well if you're willing to open up to it. And whatever answers you're seeking now, whatever next steps you're looking for, whatever guidance, let it come to you. Just be open enough to say, I'm letting it come to you. And then yes, take steps to go out and, and I'm not saying physically, but you know, explore and do what you love and do what makes you feel good and explore and explore some more and see what shows up, see what comes back. And that might just be the next step. I have yet to discover, but that's what I decided to do. I'm not going to force, I'm not going to make statements, I'm not going to hold myself to something that I don't even know. I'm not going to, you know, solve everything. I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to see what comes to me. And I'm going to make sure that I'm happy and positive and appreciative and grateful and that I do things that make me happy, do things that I love doing to make sure I stay in that high vibrational receptive state so that I'm attracting what will make me even more happy, what will make me even what will give me even more reasons to be grateful for that will make me um, even more joyous, that will make me even more appreciative, that will make me even more inspired, that will be something I love and that's my strategy for now. So um, on this note, um, I wanted to kind of just make a quick update, just the way that I am. I'm wearing some rose quartz. Um, I have so many things in just the things that I really would love to do. I have this giant collection of crystals. I work a lot with crystals. I know um, and understand their energies very well. So I'd love to create content about that, not to mention the Dark Knight of the Soul series, which is going to be pretty difficult to do because I'm going to, it will bring me back to these experiences, but I think they're important to share and kind of the aftermath of that. Um, and then, you know, there, there's just a se several projects that I've been kind of um, ideating on and um, regarding this channel. And, and so far, this is the only thing that's that keeps me really passionate and keeps me really mm, inspired. And like, every time I think of it, I smile every time I think of my channel and you guys, and how our numbers are growing. Um, just uh, beginning of January, I had a hundred subscribers. Now it's almost 300. I know most of you guys are empaths. I can kind of see the analytics a little bit, not that I'm an expert or anything, but I can see that most people come through the empath related content and all the comments that I'm getting are empaths um, sharing their experiences with me, which is the most magical thing in the world. I feel so connected to you. And I'm just so inspired by this growth. And I'm so, so eager to continue to serve you because this is the, the highest, most prized, most favorite way of serving in my life is sharing my empath journey, sharing my abilities, sharing my mm, stories, my struggles, my uh, breakthroughs and seeing that there are other people who are going through something similar or at least they can relate or they feel like they found someone that understands who they are and what they are going through. Um, there's nothing more precious to me right now than this and maybe I overthink it because often I'm ready to film, I have the idea and then I'm like I overthink it. I'm like oh I need to put some makeup on, I need to uh, do a lighting setup. I need to all this stuff, but here I am just recording a video. No makeup. I need to shower. I'm wearing my uh, uh, shawl that comes from my ancestor from uh, late 1800s. That's when she lived and that's her shawl and it still survives. So I'm wearing the shawl. I just keep it in my office just because it, it feels like my ancestors are hugging me. My, um, my ancestor Sadie is hugging me. Um, and so, yeah, so here I am with the rainbow in my face and it's the best experience ever. And I'm having this realization that I should stop overthinking it and just do it and do it as much as possible because I have so much to share. And I'm the only person who's holding me back because I'm overthinking and trying to be maybe too perfectionist and I'm kind of done with that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you want to support me on my journey as an empath, and if you're an empath and you want to support yourself on your own journey, I highly encourage you to subscribe. Uh, definitely hit the bell button because I have no schedule and I kind of upload randomly. 
And if there are some empath related themes that you're interested in, that's the best way to make sure that you're not going to miss my new uploads. So um, if you have any questions, comment. I respond to all of the comments that I get and um, I'd be happy to talk to you guys. And again, thanks so much. I love you so very much. I hope you can feel my love. Until the next time. Bye. <laughs>